was a capital offense to change the markers on the road. You get the picture of what I'm getting out here? It was a capital offense. Post lines and emergence have decided to abandon the landmarks. The markers have been changed. In ancient Rome, like I said, moving those landmarks was punishable by death or exile. Remove not the old land landmark, God's word says. Or don't remove the past. Understand what's going on. Understand these bedrock truths that can't be changed, is what that's saying to us. Moving the landmarks is robbery to the next generation. This generation right now that is in church out here, probably on tonight, by the way, because it's abandoned Sunday night service now. This is robbing that generation. I'll close with this. A.W. Tozer. We who preach the gospel must not think of ourselves as public relations agents sent to establish goodwill between Christ and the world. We must not imagine ourselves commissioned to make Christ acceptable to big business, the press, the world of sports, or modern education. We are not diplomats, but prophets, and our message is not a compromise, but an ultimatum. I have that quote right there on these two slides on a plaque on my wall, my office wall, that I'll never forget. But that's our task. My task isn't to make people feel comfortable and fuzzy and meet all the felt needs of those around us. Great to do so, but my first task is the presentation of the gospel, no matter what people think of it. But someday I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes. And man, I want to hear the people I minister to feel the same, or hear the same exact words. And have that reward too. And that's what really is being robbed from the, from the post iron generation. Let's pray. Father, it is a troubling hour, but you have not been displaced from your throne yet. You are still King of Kings, God of Gods, Lord of Lords. You are still the great I Am. You were still El Shaddai. You were Yeshua, King of Kings, Lord Jesus. I'm so grateful that nothing has changed. That you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you present the same salvation to those who will hear and who will accept. We have a lot of ideas being taught here on the earth, Lord. Many more than I even have any, have any inkling of. Who say you're one way or another who say you're not like you used to be, who claim there's no need to think about an eternity separated from you. We have so many people saying so many different things, so many voices. The only way we can ever know is by your word. And thank you, Lord, that your word gives us clear understanding of who you are and what our responsibilities as humans here on the earth are. So, Lord, in the midst of confusion around us, in this troubling and confusing time, help us remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We take joy in knowing you, King of kings and Lord of lords, and regardless of all the evil we see around us, regardless of all the turmoil, regardless of all the sickness, regardless of all the, the fighting and, and the mayhem, the disagreements, that we see with the world. Regardless of all that, Lord, help us take strength in knowing the one that we serve. I pray that each of us here would not walk away in a state of depression or dismay, that we walk away better equipped to understand what is happening in the world around us. And I pray, Lord, that somehow by what's been said this evening and this morning too, Lord, that this has helped us to understand so that we can be more effective in our number one task, and that task is to share Jesus Christ in a lost and dying world. So help us remember these things by your Holy Spirit. Help us to have made good notes and take, take care with those notes. Help us to use the DVDs or the books or whatever it is that will help us to understand these things to be able to take them to someone else. But Lord, don't let us despair. We're so grateful you promised you're coming. And you promised you'd help us. And you promised the Holy Spirit would always be there and would be directing the guide if we'd accepted Jesus. We have such great faith 
and what your word says, and we know it, Father, because we know we're changed, we're different. You changed us, and you long to change others through the work that we do. So help us be about our Father's business as we watch for our soon coming King. We're grateful now, Father, in Jesus' name. Heads bowed just for a second. I regretted not going a little further this morning once I sat down and handed the microphone to Pastor Shannon. <clears throat> just in case there's anybody here who's not absolutely sure you're saved, like I said earlier, you can know that your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life and in eternity is saved. So if there's anybody with any doubts about where you'd be for all eternity, if this was the last time you ever heard a message in church, if you have any doubts at all, would you simply slip your hand up and I can just say a prayer for you that I could pray for you personally? Anybody at all? What peace and comfort there is in knowing that we know in whom we believe and we trust in him to do that day. What peace and comfort there is in that? So my charge to you is now, just don't hear these things that we've talked about. But recognize what's going on that you can go out there and be effective and do the work of the gospel. That's my prayer for you. In Jesus' name. Good message, brother. Good message. Um, something that uh, I remember in the days when I first started going to church, seriously started going to church. I was raised in church, uh, but got saved uh, in the prayer for the Church of God. Um, me and Becky was about 19, 20 years old. And uh, one thing that always I always appreciated, that the pastor always preached the truth. He always told it like it was. But you know what I noticed? It's about 80%, maybe 90% of the people loved it. They did. They loved to have their toes stepped on. They loved to be, you know, gouged sometimes. Told, look, this is sin. This is wrong. And a lot of times we as Christians who have compassion and heart, we worried about people, how they think of us, or whether we're going to hurt their feelings or not, uh, sometimes we shy away from that truth. And uh, I just want to discourage that. Um, the Bible tells us to speak the truth in love. And these seminars like this, there's a sermon community, Brother Eric has brought to us in this manner, are very important that we learn this stuff. And then when we talk to people, they want to know the truth. Don't be afraid to tell them. And don't vomit the gospel on them. Don't Bible thump them over the head. Okay? You know, but tell them the truth. I, I've just been talking to a few gentlemen last week. You know, one man, he kind of got embarrassed. Another guy was just getting, you know how guys are, guys. You know, we like to give each other a hard time. He, he embarrassed this other guy and said, did you know he was a pastor? Boy, his face got red with that coat. And I didn't want him to say that, but he said it anyway. And it wasn't, I didn't, you know, I was just like, that's kind of embarrassed for him. And uh, at least he said a few choice words, you know. And uh, he came back to me and he apologized and said, look, he said, I want you to tell me. Please tell me the truth of anything. I mean, he was really, I, I was like, I'm not, you know. But if he comes to me and talks to me, I will. But that, I've noticed that. When I talk to people, they, they want to know the truth. And even if it feels like it's going to hurt, when you tell them, they still want to know. And I, I, I'll go back to... Uh, Brother Eric mentioned some of the shows we liked watching. A few years ago, I have to admit, I used to enjoy watching American Idol. But the only time I liked watching American Idol was when Simon was on there. You know why? He told him like it was. That's when American Idol was popular. Everybody wanted to hear what Simon had to say. Okay, you guys all said that. That's fine. Okay, Simon, what do you have to say? Why? Because Simon wasn't afraid to tell like it was. I'm not glorifying Simon either. You can't let me say it. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to tell the truth. Their soul, I believe Brother Eric put it just right, their soul could be very dependent on whether or not you tell the truth. That's a huge 
responsibility. One last thing. This past week I heard another description on what it means to bind things in heaven and on earth. Jesus told his disciples this. Whatever you bind on earth or down in heaven. Let me give you some ex explanation of what that means. That you've been given some authority. When you're speaking the truth, you've been given some authority over some people. And they are hearing and listening. And it's up to you to tell them. Because if you don't tell them the truth, you're going to keep them from hearing the truth, you see. And so it's so important. You see, God's giving you that. He's giving you a certain stage in your life, somewhere with certain people. And it's very important that you understand that responsibility. To keep from telling them the truth, you're going to have that responsibility held on you. Okay? Their blood is on your hands. And you don't want to be in that way. You want to put the blood right on their head by telling the truth. Amen? Amen. It's evil 33. Evil 33. Amen. Very good. So I pray for you. I pray for you to do that. Pray for me. Pray for Brother Eric.